Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. Well, now you've got your brand new live USB that we made in our last video. Um, and so let's see, you might have some questions about how to operate the thing once it boots up. I have here two of my super secret uh, virtual box machines here that I'm gonna show you the live boot screens for the various uh, tools. I'm gonna to show you the legacy boot uh, menu where if you this is where you would boot up if you were using not using UEFI machines I'm gonna show you that with antics and then with uh, with the MX uh, live USB I'm going to show you the UEFI side of things it's a little bit different most of the features are still there um, and there's a lot of really cool features uh, built into the grub side of thing into the UEFI slash grub side of things anyway with some cool rescue menus that we'll show you as well. So let's start with the antics. It's the classic. It's going to be in scale mode so you can see it. There we go. So this is the classic uh, live boot for for M for, for for antics. Uh, you have the uh, the, the, the legacy boot. You have the various modes. You have the safe video mode that will try to, even if your video drivers are older, it will try to load basic, more basic drivers to help you get into X or your windowing environment instead of just the console. Fail safe boots got a, does a little bit more, kind of tries to really force some things. We also have some other features that I'll show you in just a little while. I'm not quite ready for the switch to grub boot letter, bootloader feature yet. I want to show off the other items. You'll see uh, down here in the in the boot options bar some predefined boot options. Quiet just kind of shrinks down the number of scrolling text boot messages. That's actually the default on most Linux systems. And then splash T, that's not a misprint, as some folks have helpfully filed bug reports telling me that it's a misprint. Splash T is actually the text splash that the Antics Live USB system, and actually MX as well, uses on the live side of things. Uh, it's kind of like those graphical... Uh, uh, it basically, it's going to hide the, 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 the boot text that a lot of people don't want to see. But the Antics, when it hides it, it still shows you a little bit of what, what's going on. So down here at the bottom, we have the usual uh, things. We have uh, F2 for choosing your language. We have F3 for choosing your time zone. F4 for various other options. Uh, from USB will let, actually is very handy if you're, uh, I've used this in the past on my VirtualBox boot ups at the live system to use the ISO to chain load over to USB. Why do I mention it? That's very handy for you guys out there in the Annex world who maybe have an older machine that's booting off a CD, can't boot a USB, guess what? This will let you boot off, the, start the boot from the U, from the uh, CD, and then hand it off to the live USB. Actually, run off the USB. So even if you can't boot off a USB, you too can access some of the persistence features that Annex offers with a two-part system. Okay, uh, various things you can toggle the auto mount on and off. Uh, there's various other things here. Clock, there's some there's some clock stuff. There's the V card menu is very neat. If you have more than one video card, you can try to to force using the V card to give you a little during the live boot. It'll try to figure out which ver video card you want to use. This is somewhat experimental at this time, but uh, it, it, it's nice. It is it's it's it can help some people get the right video card in operation. Uh, one other thing, the i915 invert, <laughs> for whatever reason this go around, uh, uh, certain video chipsets based on Intel, uh, for whatever reason when UDEV gets done loading them it turns the backlight off. Uh, this won't affect you guys on desktops very much, but for you laptop users out there, I have two laptops that do this, um, and uh, so you can use this invert feature. What actually happens is the screen goes blank and it looks like the thing's crashed. It hasn't crashed. The backlight's just turned off. So if you use this feature, when UDEV does its thing and loads the video drivers, <laughs> it flips it. And so the, it will go bright instead of dark. Um, it's actually a, a bug in the way the Intel driver, uh, the i915 driver, uh, handles the backlight. Anyway, that's enough about the backlight. There's some information on the net. Just Google it. You'll find it. There's a bunch of other options here for making safe states, for generating a boot charge so you can see where your boot delays are if you want to, or just seeing how fast your boot is. Uh, F5 is the persistence menu. And the names have changed a little bit, but for the most part, everything's the same. Persistall is going to make a home FS and a root FS persistence file. 
and load the persist uh, and load the uh, rootfs into RAM when it loads. This is kind of like our old default. Persist root is just going to make a rootfs file and then load that into RAM when it loads. This is very similar to how Puppy does it. Uh, I actually use this quite a bit sometimes too because I don't always run with a HomeFS file system, uh, especially if the, if the USB stick is smaller. Um, persist static is just like the is just like persist root except or persist all except instead of loading it into ram when it boots it's going to run off the usb stick i actually use this one quite a bit because i run almost all usb 3 devices now and it's pretty darn fast is it as fast as running the system from ram no but i i uh, for me i break things a lot and i i i just i've come to i've come to like static and also, I use the system on, a, on my USB on a variety of systems. Some of them are very RAM-strapped. So if you're talking 2 gigs of RAM on a laptop or a gig of RAM on a laptop, go with the static options that will let you use the persistence files without maxing out your RAM. Uh, P-static root is the same kind of deal, except it doesn't make a HomeFS file. Uh, Persist Home just makes... A home FS file doesn't keep a root persistence file. This is handy uh, if you want to use a live USB, a static live USB for like banking or something like that. But you still want to store some files or a Firefox configuration or something like that. All that stuff will store in your home folder anyway, but your root file system will be locked and read only. So that can be very handy in some situations. Uh, frugal, the frugal options more or less correspond to the persist options above, but they're meant for options that go on the hard drive. Okay, so instead of this would be like if it didn't find the 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 a frugal installation on a hard drive of your selection, it would make one. It would start an installation on. I've done a couple of videos on that. You can check them out. The system hasn't changed all that much. It works pretty much the same. Just the code code names have changed. And if you happen to have old files laying around, I think the old codes still work in the background. Okay. Now on so those options are more or less the same on MX versus Antics and Antics versus MX whether you boot live or with UEFI. This next one is kind of an antics only that lets you choose which desktop you want to boot in. As most folks know, antics boots uh, comes with, well, actually four window managers, um, ISWM, Fluxbox, and JWM, plus Herbstlift WM. And then on top of all those things, you have either a space space fm desktop a rocks desktop or no desktop for the flexbox jwm and ice wm does that sound like a lot of options it's a lot of options but here it is you can select which of the ones you want off of the doodad the default here will give you the the standard rocks ice wm desktop and this these font options you can kind of sort of play with font scaling a little bit it'll try to blow the fonts up make it a little bit bigger um, think of it as a first step towards hdpi support this is kind of a neat a neat idea it tries to just scale the text up it doesn't really scale the window elements uh, uh, but it does scale the text so at least you can read what you're working with it's surprisingly uh, usable with a window manager system just to scale up the text anyway f7 the console is going to try to give your console the the black space, the prompt, the prompt you get when you don't go into X, uh, it's going to give it a um, a a, con a console resolution. Uh, I I normally don't mess with this one. And then the F8 save is going to let you save any of those options you chose into a custom boot menu. Okay, so and you can do it. You can just that's all you got to do. You hit save and you're good to go. I'm going to start a persistence. Um, uh, let's see. Let's just do a persist root uh, root here, and then we're going. I'm glad I, I got add one more little thing here because uh, in VirtualBox the live USB system is a little bit hokey, so I've kind of spoofed it by making a live USB stick onto the hard drive. So the hard drive in the VirtualBox is formatted like a live USB, but I got to give it one more command from HD. Okay, now we're going to hit enter. And it's going to start up. Now, um, here's our text boot. Ah, look, it says, hey, look, we see you want to make a rootfs file. What do we do? So I'm going to create that automatic. Well, I'm going to create a custom. Two to create a custom, and I can create whatever size I want. Um, the system tries to give you a suggestion so that you can remaster later. And I'll cover remaster in another video. I've got remaster videos up. But basically, remaster is a way to take the persistence files and the original base file, LinuxFS file, 
smash them all together and make one brand new Linux FS file and leave you room for a new root FS file. It's a very handy system. Um, and it, it's at the heart of Snapshot. It's at the heart of uh, the, Linux, the Antics Live USB system, which MX also uses. So I'm going to pop in 14 for a 4 gig just because I don't really, I'm not going to use this for anything. Do you want to create a swap file? You can create a swap file. I already know that the drive here doesn't really have enough room, so I'm going to say no. It doesn't create a swap partition. It creates a swap file. Now it's going to say, danger, insecure password. That's because now we got live USB with your own persistent stuff on it. You probably don't want to use the default passwords. That's the only thing that means. Don't be frightened. You just give a new password. So I'm going to give a new password. And we even give you an apology for making you do it. All right, so now we get the... Now, since I did not... If you choose one of the, the static persistence options, you're not going to get this. Um, this is an option to let you choose when you save the persistence file that goes into RAM. What happens when you load the... the, the, the I call it dynamic persistence file. I don't think that's what anybody else calls it, but that's what I call it. When you load that, what happens is that gets R-synced into RAM. Um... Uh, and then everything runs in RAM and it runs real fast. And when you're done, you have to save all the changes that were made to your root file system in RAM back down to the file. So you tr what happens is, in effect, you trade speed at boot for speed of usage. It's a good trade-off, especially if you turn your laptop on for a while and never turn it off, or a frugal install, for instance, on a nice big fat hard drive. Uh, this this works really nice. So anyway, I'm going to. You can choose three different options. Use manual, which I don't recommend unless you're for debugging purposes, because that means if you don't save it, you <laughs> all your changes are gone. Semi-automatic will remind you to save at logout, and automatic won't ask; it'll just do it. Uh, I'm going to choose semi. And there we go. That's all done. Now it's going to start the regular init system. UDEV's doing its thing. All that was before we ever got to the regular install. That was all inside the Antics uh, live init system. So here we are in Antics. You guys have seen Antics on the videos. I, uh, since I'm in VirtualBox, you can see that I'm running with a ETH0 here uh, uh, already. That's, that's great and fine. So, I don't know. I'm not going to make a whole lot of changes. I'm going to open up the file manager here, and I'm going to make a new file. Uh, actually, I forget how to make a new file. There we go. New file. And we'll call this new file Fred for a freaking ridiculous electronic device. Uh, so here's Fred. And so that's obviously a change. So even though it's in my home folder, I don't have a home FS system. I set up only everything is inside the root FS. So it's and there's now a change that I need to save. But that's not going to save. I'm just going to log out because I cho chose semi-automatic. And we're going to shut down the virtual machine here. Shall we begin? It knows it needs a save, so it's going to say, I'll say, sure. <sighs> and here we go. It's, it tells me a summary of what it's going to do. Shall we begin? Yes. I'm going to save. And there we are, nice and saved. And now it's going to proceed to log out. Don't worry if you log out from the prompt or you log out from the console. It's going to catch it then, too, if it doesn't see the graphical one done. It actually checks twice. It checks once, and if that one hasn't happened, it checks again later. Um, there is, that is one difference between MX and Antics. MX doesn't use the graphical save. It only does it on the console save. We'll show you that here real quick. I'm not going to go through all the options that I did, but I will show you how the system differs. So here we are. This is the UFI boot. And you can see we don't have all the F key menus, and we don't have... Uh, the the line for typing in stuff. It's a little trickier in UEFI world. Um, so I'm going to open up. First off, I'm going to type in a. Before I forget, you can always hit E in Grub. It's just regular Grub. You can hit E. I'm going to type in the one boot command I know I need, which is from HD. Actually, I can't do that yet because that change is doesn't take place till you hit the F10 button. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the customize boot option. And then customize boot, I'm going to type in the from HD. And this is going to give me a, whoops, F10 to boot. This is going to give me the, a, the menu version. Uh, let me see if I'm, there we go, we can scale that now. This is going to give me the menu version of the function keys. It's not quite as, as nice, I'll be honest with you, it's not quite as nice. But for most people that want to enter one one option from each of the different submenus, each of the different old F key menus, this isn't bad. Um, 
and I've gotten used to it because I use UFI almost exclusively these days. So I'm going to stick with my default language, but it's the language. You just type in the number. This is the number of columns on your console. I'm going to keep the default. It's I forget what the default is, but it's fine with me. Uh, my time zone. Pick your time zone here. Uh, I don't. I don't need to. I've already set that up. And here we have to see we have the same options that we had before from the F5, uh, F3 menu, which were the kind of the fancy ones, the the I95 I915 invert. You'll see there's an there's an invert and there's a no invert, right? Uh, because uh, uh, you can't really you got to turn it back off from the you got to have a way to turn it back off if you need to. So the the menu has a no. Uh, the 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 live the, the the legacy boot you just turn it off in the in the function key menu. Uh, but all the other keys are here. Oh look, I didn't have to enter that from equals HD because it's here in this menu. Good to know. I will remember that for the future. Uh, and again, you have the same saves and, and everything. I don't, I don't ne actually need anything in this one because I've already entered the from equals HD already. Um, and then the same persistence options that we had under under Annex. So I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with the uh, persist root again three. And there's some scaling stuff. And now it's going to create that. I'm going to let it automatically create it this time. Swap file no because I have the same. Same space restrictions. Save these changes. Yes, that's the default. Now it's going to give me a custom boot menu option on that grub screen, uh, so I don't have to do all that every time. The, the the there'll be a customized entry, and if I ever want to recustomize that entry, I just do the customized menu option all over again. So again, the password thing you saw once before. Uh, yes, semi-automatic. Fine. And then we're going to boot up into the usual MX environment. After the initial boot menus, the boot boot up sequence is essentially the same um, between legacy and UEFI. You just got to got to get past that that initial uh, customization setup if you want to do any. The top level options is just boot with all defaults are exactly the same. So here we are with uh, the running MX system. I'm going to do the same thing I did before with uh, making a blank file called Fred. Okay, I don't really need to do that, but it's for illustrative purposes, just to make sure something's changed in the file system. Now, I mentioned that MX does not use the graphical save routine. It doesn't. I'm going to hit the shutdown. But you're going to see what happens as it shuts down on the live system. It's going to ask me. Here it is. Antics save persistent root shall we begin yes here's the same information that the graphical screen gave us shall we begin yes it does this thing it rsyncs and it's done you won't see those if you use the persistent or not persistent if you use the static options but that is how the two views from the usb from the, the legacy and the live usb well, that's it for actually booting up your live USBs, and we showed you how to turn on your uh, how to set up persistence. And by the way, did I mention I didn't? But I'm going to that if you run the installer from either Antics or MX in a live USB with persistence, whatever applications you have installed in the persistence setup will carry over. This is very nice. I keep a live USB stick with all my applications on it. If I ever need to reinstall, which doing development work, sometimes I break things. I have to reinstall things. Plug the stick back in 10 minutes later, my default environment's back up and running. It's pretty nice. So that's the Annex Live USB system as shown in Legacy BIOS boot and UEFI boot on Antix and MX. It's like an all-for-one deal today in Live USBs. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or antixlinux.com or throw up a post at the respective forums, forum.mxlinux.org or anticsforum.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.